So one of you guys left a comment, Katie left a comment, on my last video and it kind of made my day so I thought I would read it to you now. I just realized I've been subscribed for months and don't even know her name. <laughs> She's so strange. Don't even know what is happening on her channel half the time, but I'm interested to see where... I don't know where the rest of it, where it goes, maybe. Anyway, this is this is how I felt that my channel has always been. That's how I feel like my website has been. It's all improving. I really am in so many different places and trying to direct some sort of message or have some clear vision as to what exactly this channel is. I really don't have one and that's why I've always felt that daily vlogging would be the best thing. I just can't seem to ever be consistent. As for my name, my name's Annabelle O'Neill. I don't like watching traditional intros to YouTube videos, but I suppose I could try. Hey guys, I'm Annabelle and you're watching Living Life Fruitfully. I talk about my tiny house, minimalism, veganism, walking barefoot, grounding, forest therapy, random other topics that I like talking about, my travel videos, daily vlogs, Ninja Warrior, books that I like to read. So maybe that's why it doesn't work. Hey guys, I'm Annabelle. Annabelle, that's me. Oh boy. In all seriousness, I will start introducing myself at the beginning of every video. Maybe it'll be better. Maybe now that you know my name, I'm a real person. Believe it or not, I do, you know, have a name. My parents named me when I was born. Um, and if you want to see more facts about me, I have done a tag about myself. So you can check that out. I will link it below. So now for the topic of this video, being vegan while traveling. I think that's something that a lot of people are hesitant and concerned about, for sure. I guess the first advice I would say is try to be as prepared as possible. Try to research about wherever you're going, what types of food they generally have, and if you have space, bring like energy bars if you can bring those, or maybe like a small, some sort of pot if you can cook your own food because then it's much easier to know that you're eating 100% vegan if you're making all your own food while traveling. It's also really important to be clear and communicate to everyone that is helping you get to where you need to go or giving you a tour. If you really make it clear, they will be able to give you what you need as long as you are very direct to them and make it clear that you do not eat any meat, any dairy, any eggs, any seafood then you can name you can name them as well don't just use the categories because sometimes they misunderstand so you can say milk cheese uh, yogurt butter and then you can say like beef pork chicken just just name it all because there's no reason for you not to it'll take you an extra few seconds and it could save you a few confusing meal times once you get there, and if you do end up encountering an issue, it's really important to be easygoing and understanding. So there's been two places that I've personally traveled to that I've had some minor, not issues with, but they haven't been completely perfect, and they were feeding me, trying to feed me stuff that did have meat in it, meat in it or dairy. So Madagascar and Haiti, I had various issues there. In Haiti, I was, we were trying to be very clear with this restaurant and they ended up, we, we asked for something that usually has meat, meat in it and they're like, oh, okay, we can have it without, you can have it without meat. But instead of making it, they just picked out the meat and they didn't pick all of it out. Um, and we noticed when we were eating. And then in Madagascar, there was two instances where there was vegan rice, rice with vegetables, but it was very clearly cooked in some sort of meat, oil, something, I really don't know. Maybe it was just the pan that they used and didn't wash. It was nasty. But you have to kind of understand that these places, they don't really get it. 
they don't understand it and also it's a real privilege to be able to choose to eat vegan because in a lot of these different countries they don't they don't have a real choice but they're definitely involved in the raising and killing of animals which I really do think if you are going to eat meat that it's important that you are part of the whole process of having a piece of chicken on your plate because then you have the full connection unlike in most of the world where you go and buy your meat at a store and you bring it home and cook it you don't really see the whole process of the slaughterhouses and everything else that's involved. I've heard a lot of people say that uh, telling people that you are allergic to it instead of just you are vegetarian or vegan they assume by choice they will take it much more seriously if you say you have an allergic reaction or I mean you don't have to exaggerate the situation but you can say you know my stomach really doesn't feel good and I it's a possibility that I might you know throw up or something like that especially in like a situation that it would be completely disre disrespectful to not eat say like someone who doesn't have very much money and they're making this extravagant meal for you and you can't eat it because there's meat or dairy in it just simply say that you're allergic to it because otherwise they would take great offense to you not just eating it just ask for white rice and vegetables and everything will be okay I think that's all I have for this video I hope you're having an amazing day you may check out my apparel at bemorebadass.com you may check out my website living life fruitfully I am starting to try and get a blog going I have a newsletter as you know there's an ambassador program to become part of um, the living life fruitfully family if you will I will see you very soon and I hope you're having a badass day <laughs>